Hello, everybody. DF here to play another round of Monster Prom. Uh, pfft, the first game. <laughs> Whoops. Okay, so uh, this gameplay after patron votes, I've decided this is not going to be going for a particular ending, but I'm going to open the gift that's in the shop. It costs no money, and it randomly generates what's going to happen. So, I don't know. There, we're just going to improvise our gameplay. Not going to plan for anything in particular. Unless it does. It is one of those things that comes out of the gifts that triggers a secret ending. So, let's just... Okay. You get the chance to produce a movie. It's based on something about superheroes, but with a love triangle between a beautiful, somewhat relatable girl and two of the super hot superheroes, which are also like pirates of... Blah, blah, blah. The most influential bunch of novelists have gone nuts. The bars here, mouse off. Two cool guys, lots of explosions. Uh, yeah, I just went for what I would go in. Democracy is just broken. What would be the best way of choosing the leaders of the modern society? Could a rally show called America's Next Top President, where the candidate com can complete in all kinds of physical and mental challenges, vote turnout would increase, and return on private on it, money. Who are playing the most heartbreaking violence? So it wins, and like, and something about the very brain president. I know that's fun. Okay, your partner just gave you a cool gift for your anniversary, but you totally forgot. Quick, come up with an idea for a great gift. Pony, always a pony. Anything capable of leading them to an overdose of some sorts. The head of the Freesis enemy. Silly toy that makes silly noises. A friendly Roomba with wobbly eyes. Uh, the abstract concept of gratefulness. If I'm answering honestly, the pony. What would be a killer accessory? Uh, fancy brass knuckles, coolness itself, sunglasses at night, log attack, blah, 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 Sailor Moon's magic wand, uh, famous purse made from the skinny, fabulous purse made from the skinny or worst man to meet. Like, if you guys want me to go for a particular ending or, or go for a particular date, then become a patron and you can vote on the polls if for future gameplays. Just go to patreon.com slash disneyfanatic2364. Yeah, Sailor Moon's Magic Wand. I, never, I still haven't watched Sailor Moon. I like, watched one episode and I didn't quite get into it. And yes, I watched it in the original Japanese. I still didn't quite get into it. I don't know. You think with this kind of stuff I'm into, I would be more into it. Boldness, charm. Boldness is poor here. That day you skip class and just hang out in the bathrooms because you expect no authority. Of course, once we get to the... Gift? It's not really gonna matter what stats we have now. <laughs> I guess some people just want to watch the world burn by skipping class and hanging out in the bathrooms. <sighs> you give zero shits, but you gain two bullness. You're enjoying the sound of no ear-splitting shrieks filling the air when suddenly an ear-splitting shriek fills the air. Zoe, what is this abominable nonsense? How dare you so much as think such filth, much less write it, and much less put it on the internet? Oh, is this one again? Miranda, I honestly have no idea what you're upset about. I'm simply expressing myself through the noble art of fan fiction. By writing a story about me, a noble and beautiful mer princess, in a forbidden romance with Nash Omahone, the son of the Prime Minister of the Air Kingdom. The Prime Minister, Zoe, I would never date anyone from such some socialist nightmare scape with a Prime Minister. But this has nothing to do with you. It's not set at Spooky High, it's set at Creepy High, and the mer princess is named Marmanda Vanderbunt. That sounds nothing like... Oh, sorry. Maybe this is not a good day to do a gameplay. My throat's, like, weird. Lisa, I'm at least doing a short game and not much of a road trip, which takes forever. So it's nothing like Miranda Vanderbilt. They barely even end with the same four letters. Don't you know the last four letters are the most magical and important of all letters in our monarchy culture? Why? I should have this drivel ripped into shreds with a level knife, the color used by the most scaly of viewers. See, Miranda, you're nothing like Miranda. She totally would have gone with the slander spoon. I simply can't stand by while my friend, classmate, and inferior publishes such air people sympathizer nonsense. Oh dear, this could get uglier than it already is. Better stuff on help a lady out. Which lady? That was up to you. Leave Zoe alone, Miranda. Don't you see she's done you a huge favor by exposing the treachery of Marmanda Vanderbunch? You need to go destroy Marmanda, not Zoe. Miranda's right, Zoe. A better writer wouldn't even need to put something as disgusting as the air people in a fan fiction. It's just a cheap trick for 
shock value like self sister are DF is right, Miranda. Haven't you ever heard the phrase don't shoot the messenger? Oh certainly yes, lots of times. It's what all of Daddy's messengers say, right before I shoot them. Yeah, let me just stop for a moment. But of course, Zoe is merely a classmate and subject act and subject acting in this case as a messenger. So killing her would be inappropriate. <coughs> mm. And not covered by daddy's insurance. So tell me more about this devious Marmanda person and her relationship with Nash Omahone. Well, as you can imagine, their love is inherently tragic and beautiful since they come from the Myrrh and Air Kingdoms, respectively. Sorry, respectively. I describe it as a typical star-crossed lover story with a large portion of hurt comfort tropes since it is set during the Mare Air War. Yes, yes, and where might I find this Marmanda so that I may execute, I mean, bring her to justice? Oh, all the usual places. Uh, ff.net, AO4, <laughs> I mean, she's definitely real and probably hiding from you somewhere far, far away, like a desert. Anywhere where you won't interrupt my fic writing. Thanks for that, DF. Marmanda Vanderbunt may be an extremely thinly veiled stand-in for Miranda, but she's my extremely thinly veiled stand-in for Miranda. I'm excited to continue her romantic adventures, and I hope you'll join me. By join her, Zoe means read her fic, which you realize when she sends you a link and a reminder to review, but hey, she's sharing something she loves with you. Two creativity, one charm. Yeah! All right, let's see what the gift does, because it might steer us away from Zoe. Who knows? Okay. Remember, patrons, you agree to this. Ah, uh, you miss me and my shit, huh? Worry no more. All this shit can be yours if you had the money. Not me, though. All right, here we go. See, I was if to know what a gift needs giving. Yeah. Okay, and we just need to click on it. Well, you asked for it. And now I know you love video games, so ask the clerk which one's the game, bo game every boy wants. Well, that was anticlimactic. Let's just see where we're going with this. Okay, well, great. We can't get more fun. That's just terrific. All right, that kind of brought stuff down. What now? That day, an epic dodgeball match takes place. Everything seems lost, but you deliver an inspirational speech that fuels your team's spirit, leading to a spectacular comeback. You're clearly a natural-born leader. You gain two charm. You're trying to focus on your own love life, but the sloppy makeout sounds coming from Violet and Tate are making it difficult. Uh, take that somewhere else. My snakes will never be able to digest their food if they have to watch this disgusting display. Yeah, and my fanfiction muse is running for the hills. How am I supposed to write romance when the two of you are hop making it look so, so unappealing? Well, 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 sounds like somebody is a little bit jealous of our amazing, perfect, wonderful relationship. We're not bothering anyone, you know. Wow, okay. I wasn't even going for this voice, but maybe I should keep this uh, cryptic kind of voice. You commented on my fanfiction, still not as romantic as every day with my bae. And then a bunch of heart eye emojis and, emojis and stars and also the kimono emoji. Why did you comment the kimono emoji? You see, Zoe, this is why it's better to be a strong, independent nightmare creature. Terrifying women. Terrify women. You don't know what you're talking about. DF, you're always trying to romance your classmates in various unlikely ways. It's a couple versus... It's a couple versus a pair of people who don't understand the joys of being in a couple. Go on and be the tiebreaker. Well, if Zoe and Vera don't want to be in a relationship, it's going to be hard to get them in a relationship with you. Time to convince one of them. Vera, historically, the only reason why people get mar people marry was tactical alliances and increasing the wealth of both families. So really, marriages are a great way of solidifying and increasing power and marital ga material gain. Zoe, when you're in a relationship, you can do silly couple costumes for Halloween, like peanut butter jelly and puberty or shame. Damn it! Well, this is going to be an interesting gameplay. That's some classic DF nonsense fueled by traditional closed-minded beliefs. You don't have to be in a relationship to do a couple's costume. If Vera and I wanted to do costumes as puberty and, sh and shame, we totally could. And we're not dating. 
Although I bet some fans would totally want us to, since we can both be scary and I have tentacles and she has snakes, so there's probably something sexy that could happen there. Uh-oh. <laughs> you know, even though I failed this, this is an interesting outcome. Okay, you're done. But what if I were in a relationship with Vera? You're not. But people wanted me to be in a relationship with Liam because purple on purple will look beautiful. Or Kaki Lester, since we're both new students. Oh, no. We can't be in a relationship. Think how disappointing that would be for anyone not on board the ship. Hashtag all ships are valid. You know, even though, yeah, this is an interesting outcome. I like this. Well, I think being in a relationship is magical. We've never disappointed anyone. Because you don't have any fans. Ooh, sick burn. But also, Zoe isn't a fan of relationships at all now, which does not bode well for you. Congrats on losing two charm and one creativity. I think I had still got points with her. Uh, I don't know what just happened. Okay. That day during recess, you start a half hour rave that goes full crazy. You have no idea how it escalates so much, but at one point, there are like 300 people. Someone summons demons from a nightmare dimension. The consequences might distort the fabric of reality itself, but who cares? It's a rad party. You gain two fun. You see Zoe talking to Polly and Scott. You weigh your respect for privacy versus your insatiable ambition to smooch your classmates. And as always, there's a cl clear winner. And then I obliterated all population within the ne Nevelin realm. And to date, most of their souls live live within my body in utter despair. Whoa, Zoe. It sounds like you used to be a hell of a prankster back in the day. Yeah, remember the alternate thing we did? You betcha. I was what you would call in this realm, just shit. But, I don't know, that wasn't entirely me. I mean, it kind of was for endless millennia, but... I never felt as myself as I feel now. Does that sound stupid? No way! As cool as the gourd sounded, nothing is cooler than feeling happy with yourself. Word! Aw, guys! Nonsense! Yeah, this dude. Oof. Hey, Leonard. Anything to add? Of course! I overheard you talking about how precious it is for you to tur turn from a disgusting huge thing into a high school girl. What a surprise! A what? Yeah, yeah, now it's so hot to be a minority, am I right? An endless zany to despair that has turned into a girl? So brave, so unique, so bullshit. Change is so hot now, huh? People changing their identities, my childhood cartoons changing their art style, Thor changing his gender, even the climate is allegedly changing. There's only one point I agree on, and that's the childhood cartoons changing their art style. Some points it was unnecessary. Johnny Test, you barely notice. Arthur, you clearly notice. I'm sorry. So, I'm kind of agreeing with them on that. Thor, I don't care. Thor didn't change his gender. Just someone else became Thor. That happened to be a girl. And yes, the climate is changing. What's next? Should we change our ideas? Should I change my clothes from time to time and lose my signature smell? Yes, change your clothes. Maybe. No, no, and no! I, Leonard, should be the last bastion of hope for common sense before we, the majority, become the new minority. Oh, grow up. You're already in the minority. You're a guy. You're technically already a minority. 51% of the population is women. 49% is men. You're already technically a minority. I will fight this fight by being super obnoxious. Am I reminding you that you are not brave at all? Unlike me, who is super brave because I will literally never empathize with anyone else. Wow, this is kind of on the nose. And you can't change my mind. Because I fucking hate change. You totally know Zoe is capable of defending herself, but if she does, her wrath might damage reality severely. Also, standing by your friends is the right thing to do, so you defend change in terms that Leonard can understand. Leonard, but you only buy your video games once their prices have changed when they go on sale. Ooh. Leonard, as you seem immune to rational thinking, I challenge you to a Pokemon duel in order to change your mind. But, but, it can't be. Don't you do that? I do that. I bought the dang and Rumpa games while they were on sale. Of course I do. Those lazy game devs don't deserve my precious money. Also, should I remind you, I am an influencer with more than 200 subscribers. It should be them made me to play their puny games. Okay. Disclaimer here. Well, yes, 
I did get a game code for the third Monster Prom game. It in as a congratulations for my gameplays. I also did not feel entitled to that. Like I did not like ask them to do it. They just that was their choice to do it. So like like don't like you shouldn't like yeah like yes if like the developers want to send you a free game code then fine yes then accept it but if you should not feel entitled like just insisting that they send you a game code randomly like they should be the one reaching out to you and that is their decision you should not be the one hampering them to send them a free game code just like you should not be t demanding people to hire you as a voice actor or artist without any backing up and when you're not even doing a project. There we go. That's, I'm done with my rant. So you buy them on sale? Of course! Then DF made a point. Even if it was a tiny bit fucked up to compare my identity transition to video games that were on sale... No, it can't be! Me, Leonard, a phony! No, no, I'll stop doing it right away! It's gonna cost you a lot of money. You mean you will change your behavior towards video game sales? Oh, we've, we said to crisis. Yes! I mean, no! I mean... Arg! You fools! This is not the last of me you will see! Be ready for my revenge! Do a bunch of angry tweets! This is like if Donald Trump had gone to school and did... It actually had some brains, even if, well, there's some brain in there, not always the right part of the brain. Whatever. What just happened? Uh. Oh, nothing, just DF being the best. Thank you. Yeah, how didn't we see best, how, did, how didn't we see the best way of fighting Leonard was beating him up with his own stupidity? <laughs> We're Team Zoe, and Team Zoe just won. Hooray! You're the best team ever. You all hug, and it's the sweetest thing ever. Later, in your secret lab, you distill the sweetness into three charm. Ooh. Wait, what? Huh? Wait a minute. <laughs> what? I, I No, I just... Okay, we're gonna have to boost our stats. Hey, Dahlia! I'm not romancing you this time. No one tried to get a regular any with you in Monster Camp, but it's just not working. As soon as you sit down, Dahlia takes one look at your tray and then locks eyes with you. It's really intense. Your cantaloupe slice. Give it to me. You hesitate. You really like cantaloupe. Please, maintain your balanced diet with plenty of fruits and vegetables is key if I want to stay healthy enough to conquer the eighth circle of hell. You get that, but cantaloupe is like super tasty. Fine, I propose a bargain. You give me one piece of cantaloupe and I give you command of my army for one hour. That's a pretty good deal. You can't help but accept. Now, to use Dahlia's army for a truly important purpose. Making the most collaborative salad ever. Finding out once and for all how many demonic soldiers it takes to grow screw in a light bulb. Okay. This question has plagued you for years. Finally, an opportunity to put the matter to bed. After one hour of rigorous testing, you come to the conclusion that there are two possible answers. If you just ask one soldier to screw in the light bulb, then one. Or if you order three soldiers to screw in one light bulb while the rest of the army fires crossbows at them, a potentially infinite number. You submit your findings to a renowned jokeology journal and gain four smarts for your hard work. Interesting. I actually don't remember that one. What do I need more of? Let's do fun again. That day during recess, you start a half-hour rave that goes full and crazy. You spot Juan, the mag small magical Latino cat who seems a bit sad. He explains to you that he's worried people are so used to calling him Juan, the magical, small magical Latino cat, that now everyone defines him only by his size, magicality, ethnicity, and species. He's more than that. Yes, he's a guy that gives you free booze in Monster Camp. He's so much more than that. You correct him. You don't see him in such simplistic terms of convenient definitions. She said, there are another 23 other different Juans in the school, so adding all that to his name is quite unnecessary. You tell him you'll never forget about, about him and the crazy adventures you both lived together in Monster Prom's sequel, Monster Middle School. Oh, M Monster Prom's prequel, Monster Middle School. I want that to come out, but then again, it'd be kind of weird if we were dating a bunch of middle schoolers. I mean, it's already borderline that we're dating high schoolers. The only way that this is okay is that you happen to make them older than 18. 
You have a great time remembering those crazy stories. You're getting too fun. Uh, speaking of small magical cats. Yes, Fluffy, you can come in here. Well, she's not a mag. Well, she's not a Latino cat. She's a calico cat. You want to come up and say hi? You want to come up and say hi? Okay, you want to come up and say hi? Ah, you get you in your picture here. Booyah, booyah, booyah. Booyah, booyah. Okay. Later, you hear some discordant chants, so you got to see what's happening. Oh, is it God, ruler of the Dark Realm? It's time to bring despair and doom upon this dimension. You guys again. Geez, stop it. For the last time, I'm Zoe now. Can't you respect that? Is this a test of our unholy awfulness? Are you testing our faith by forcing us to use false names? Our faith is strong, almighty Zagord. We will pass the test. Zagord is almighty, for it reigns the dark realm, and it will bring the void into this puny reality. Eee! Stop calling her an it! Hey, what's happening here? Stop it! Bad cultists! Leave Zoe alone! Vera smacks the cultists with a roll of newspaper until they leave. Thanks, V. You're the worst. Always calling me that name, Zagord, and referring to me as it. Yeah, it's disrespectful. Sure, no problem. Hey, broskies! We heard what those cult bros were saying. Is it true you used to be that Zagord bro? I guess so, in a way. But bro, the cult bros told us everything about you. They said we are good cult material. Something about how being pack-minded is a great start. Mm -hmm. But, but, why would you go for being a giant monster to a little girl? That's so weak. Oh, man, that's like, it's pretty much what people say to those who are born biologically male, but they go through the transition to female. Man, we're getting a heavy, an unexpectedly heavy episode here. Oof, because I didn't feel like myself. It wasn't who I truly was. Oof, that sounds complicated. Don't listen to her! She's lying! She obviously did that shit for attention! Oh boy, they don't do it for attention. Like, I, okay, I'm not trans. I'm ace. People tell me I'm doing that to feel special. Like, no. I'm not doing it to feel special. I'm doing it because nothing else fit. Straight didn't fit. Gay didn't fit. Bi didn't fit. And I'm sure somewhere along the lines, trans... Trans people feel that, like, well, you know, I'm not exactly gay. I'm not bi. That's not what's making me feel uncomfortable. I feel like I'm not myself. Like, oh, maybe I'm not a boy or I'm not a girl. <laughs> like, why can't people just feel like themselves without anybody else bashing on them? We're not doing it for attention. We're doing it just so we can love ourselves. Like, you know, the healthy kind of self-love. Not egotism, but... But just... Feel, feeling like we, we're ourselves, that we belong, that there's something that fits us. I'm sorry. This is making me much more upset than I thought it would. Now everyone changes their pronouns and identities like they're just hats. No, more like we just had a fake hat put on us all our lives and now we're taking them off. You know what? I identify as an attack helicopter. Yeah, see what I did there? I made a clever and original joke to prove I th think something that's important to you is stupid to me. You can't handle my nuanced humor. Mm. Rear says nothing. She just stabs her. <laughs> yes. Aw, uh, that was sweet. Thanks again. Sure. You know, we're sisters. Not sisters. Or sisters. Wait, sis. Oh, I can't even say it. No, but really, why would you change all that? Like... You also change your name? Even your pronouns? Ugh, I really want you to understand, guys. But explaining it all the time is starting to feel like a chore. So, anyone else? Don't look at me. My thing is stabbing. So, it's your turn. You sometimes aren't born in a way you truly feel like yourself. Like, you were born as individual werewolves, I guess, before becoming a wolf pack. Hmm. You know, that actually makes sense. Or produce a dumb action blockbuster full of explosions that unexpectedly serves as a metaphor for the nuances of identity and transitioning. That is valid, too. I'm writing something like that. Well, not an action explosion thing, but... Definitely somewhere along those lines. At least it talks about identity. Maybe not in this same type of identity, but... 
like different kind of identity. It's more, more like it kind of does more has to do more with cultural identity. Anyway. No! Don't remind us of those dark times. We had we had individual names like like Archibald. That is terrible. So you felt like that too when you were Zagor the Zagor thing? I mean, it's a bit more complicated than that. I changed my name to match the identity that felt truly like mine and left that other identity behind. And pronouns are important because they're another way to convey that identity. Being it was tied to being an endless deity of despair, so I changed that. And I am in an endless deity of despair. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, why'd you come in in the first place? People change pronouns because language is important. It defines our understanding of reality, guys. Same way that some people prefer to go by they because they see themselves beyond the binary spectrum. Uh-huh. I do not, by the way. I just include they because, well, it's a video game character and I kind of like to distance myself from it a little bit. Uh. Yes, yes, Zagor was like being a lone wolf and Zoe is like being a wolf pack. Yeah, whatever makes him understand. Ooh. Oh, we get it. Okay, we'll try to remember for next time. Thanks. I mean, weird metaphor, but sure, if that helps them to be a tiny bit more respectful, then I guess it's baby steps. Thanks, you two, for having my back. Sometimes it gets exhausting. Sure. You go bowling all, all together and have lots of fun, especially because it's regular bowling and not death bowling. You are having a great time, and you gain two charm and one fun. Oh, maybe like one more one more event before the final event that day an epic dodgeball match takes place the match is so intense and both teams are so into it that you decide to raise the stakes by betting part of your charm against part of the other leader's charm that commitment amazes your whole team and their spirits fueled by determination finally win and take two charm from the other team's leader she's now a bit less fabulous the next round you find yourself on a team with Zoe, Miranda, Dahlia, and E. Amalgam of fungus and fur that calls itself Violet and Tate. You're losing. I'll stop all these dodgeballs with my face! Yes, good. Stand in front of me so that nothing ruins my expertly coiffed hair. And Zoe, go over there and, I don't know, eat their brains or something. No can do, Freda. Friendo. Too busy laughing at all this failure and imagining everybody naked. Plus, my popcorn's almost ready. No, no, no. You're doing... No, no, no. You're doing this all wrong. We can see so clearly that what this team's problem is. Is it that we're bad at dodgeball? Of course not. It's that you're bad at relationships. Maybe I should keep this voice for Violet. Which one? Uh, I don't know. It's so obvious. Dahlia has the perfect sports body, but no understanding of tactics. It all tactics you right in the mouth. Miranda is a natural leader, but a frail figure makes her unfit for team athletics. I wear my brittle bones with pride as proof of noble inbreeding. Ew. But if they were to fuse into a single being, they would be unstoppable. You know, you might have a point. Princess Muscles, will you join your brawn with my brains? Sure, I can do that. I think I saw it on TV once. What? Time seems to freeze as Dolly and Miranda spontaneously burst into dance. They gyrate, sashay, and pirouette towards each other until... Dolly picks up Miranda and puts her on her shoulders. It's just as we thought. The power that love has made them unstoppable on the dodgeball court. Okay. You had a point, but you didn't have to make it romantic. They are up obliterating the competition with a combination of keen strategic insight and raw muscularity. Want to draw fan art, but can't. Look away. Yes, love really does conquer. Uh-oh. Hey, guys, the game is over. We won. You can stop subjugating the other team now. I mean, hey, stop establishing a police state and ruling you with an iron fist. Uh-oh, that's not what this gym is for. Oh, jeez. They've gone mad with power. <laughs> if we don't do something to separate them, we're doomed. Hell yeah, you're great at fucking shit up. You had to devious plan. You know what they say, three's a crowd, invite a third wheel to come ruin their fusion. Mm. Remind Miranda that if she really wants to follow Violet and Tate's advice, she should make sure to feed on her own brain. Ugh. Oops. 
What, so you think polyamory is destined to fail by its very nature? You must be a riot in the bedroom. I'm not, at all. I'll have you know that my pal, the Morgan, has been in a committed threesome with herself for 10,000 years. You know, I like Zoe when we fail. <laughs> As if love is meant to be shared between one parasite and one host, no more, no less. Anything else is a thin justification for emotional distance slash not having your brain colonized by parasitic spores. Plus, three is an odd number. Someone's bound to feel left out. But what if it wasn't just three? What if there were four? Are you suggesting that Kate and I join the Moran Dahlia fusion? I like, actually, I like this outcome. All I'm saying is that I ship that. Well, haha, -ha, I mean, you've never connected with anyone outside a host parasite bond. It could be, okay, why? Why is it when I'm failing today? It's just so entertaining. It's like, this is a good, this is a good day. Quite a thrill. Oh, wow. My spores are getting all squishy just thinking about it. Just skip some dialogue. No, we can't. We shouldn't. You can. You should. Oh, all right. Freaky four away. Here we come. Riley and Tate charge of the frame. Join Miranda is already imposing fusion. The addition of two or more only makes them more powerful. They rule the gym with an iron fist. Everyone's pissed off at you for ushering this new age of terror. They're also pretty squicked out by how Violet keeps moaning the whole time. Ugh. You lose two charm and one fun. Wow, that was interesting. And uh, Why do I keep ending up with these two? You approach the couple's table. They seem welcoming, almost too welcoming. Look, honey, another lonely high schooler come to bask in the radiance of our mutual and fulfilling love for one another. Please sit with us. Being around us is probably a relief after spending time with all those desperate singles. Oh, me? I'm not eating. Kate eats for both of us. We share an digestive tract, like all good couples should. I'm not sure this is healthy anymore. Yes, I know Polly and Liam don't eat either, but that's different. I think they're just fasting because they haven't found somebody to share nutrients with yet. No, it's because one's a ghost and one's a vampire. I must be so lonely. You must be so lonely, wasting the best years of your life outside of a committed monogamous relationship. That's why you sat down with us, right? For love advice? Of course it is. It's really not. You just figured they'd be too busy snuggling to bother you while you ate. But come to think of it, you do have one question. How do you overcome the challenge of seeing your partner poop for the first time? Ew. How do you know how many nutrients you can siphon from your host? I mean, partner, without killing them. Um. Oh, that's easy. We don't poop. I use 100% of taste waste to create spores. And if I'm feeling a little bloated, I just start another fungal colony somewhere else in his body. <laughs> I don't like this anymore. In fact, starting fungal colonies in surprising places on your partner's body can really spice up a long-term relationship. So there's your answer. Pooping in a long-term relationship is a sign that your love isn't real. Wow, that was a really good answer. We should write a self-help book. You agree wholeheartedly, become their agent and publisher, and make a killing your royalties. You never actually publish anything, but you do manage to scam for money out of them. Well, that is not what I needed at all. Okay, well, hopefully I'll have enough charm for the next bed. That day, an epic dodgeball match takes place. Many people fall during the battle. You can't take any more, so you valiantly go straight to the other team's leader and start negotiations for truce. After hours of intense diplomacy, you commit to an agreement. One unexpected twist. You intend to righteousness, but this game is so wrong in so many ways, you'd be lucky if you could do anything with that and two charm. So he approaches you, looking full of joy and excitement. <coughs> DF, Monster Prom is so close, and I've started looking at her dresses. Look at this one. Don't you think it will totally highlight the slim sliminess of my tentacles? Stop right there, you purple tentacle freak idiot! Oh, hi, Leonard. You can wear as many dresses as you want, but that won't make you a real girl. You aren't fooling anyone. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. Personally, I don't think anyone should wear a dress. If they want to, girl or boy. Dude, my identity has nothing to do with convincing anyone. I'm going to wear a dress because I fucking want to. It's about me, not about you. It has everything to do with me. What if I finally meet a real gamer girl and she turns out to be an insidious faker like you? Just, wow. 
Shut up, you Zagord idiot! Dead naming me and insulting me all in one word? Boy, what imaginary real gamer girl. Boy, that imaginary real gamer girl sure is lucky. I really try not to let jerks like you get to me, but sometimes I wonder if I should just turn your kidneys into rabid raccoons, if only to save people from listening to your heartful bullshit. That's offensive. You're attacking my freedom of speech. It's my freedom to insult people and make everyone miserable. I'm going to strangle you. Hey, noobs, what's up? Ah, Damien, good thing you're here. Tell this stupid faker she can't stop us from insulting anyone or calling her Zagord or whatever we want to call her. Damien's like, no. Damien carefully lights Leonard off. <laughs> oh, God, I love, everyone's just killing Leonard here. You fucking SJWs are always so offended by everything. Die! Wow, Damien, thanks. I thought for a moment you were joining him. And no fuck. I might be an asshole, but I'm not a bigot. Yeah! Wait. And struggling with defying yourself? That's harsh. Damn. Like, who should I be? A violent hell commander? A talented hairdresser? I need to do that ending at some point. Sometimes I feel like the reason I'm so angry half of the time is because everyone is expecting me to be this or that. Even myself. It's like, I don't know, I'm not good with words, and I know you think it's different, but it's like... Whole endless despair deity is very metal, sure, but exploring your own truth and finding it find yourself in your own terms? Fuck, Zoe, that's twice as metal. It's pretty damn admi admirable. Damien. But before you can keep going with this emotional moment, someone else appears. Ah! Zagord, our sacred awfulness. Here you are, still trapped under this deceitful form. Let us perform a ritual to free you from the puny carcass. Not again. Do you want me to light them on fire too? No, it's useless. They keep coming and coming. These ants are by the thousands at least. It's my punishment for spending millennia tormenting morals, I guess. Damien was all hot and sensitive back then, but now it's your turn to shine. If you could only come up with a plan to make the cultists leave Zoe alone for good. Don't let this puny tentacle mortal go deceive you. Zagord is really trapped inside this ancient totem. Ah... You need something that satisfies their need for mindless adoration and pack behavior interested in the K-pop. Phew! Oh, are you implying this was once again a test by our omnipotent awfulness? Sure. Ah! But we knew all along! We were testing you! Sure. Do they really believe I'm inside that Evangelion figurine? Guys, guys, in order to free the Almighty's Accord, we need to learn more about how this magic totem works. Let's do some research. Here, this is a documentary about this totem. Watch it. You can find lots of internet forums discussing its hidden meanings. It will surely lead you to the answer on how to free the Accord from the totem. Here you'll sick, OGF. They'll be trapped into the torture of Evangelion's countless layers of subtext and hidden meaning. I have no idea what this is. I'll, I'll be honest. I thought it was just a reference to how we free we had Zoe inside the totem. There's no going back from there. What are you talking about? It's just a sick anime about robots killing angels. Oh, what's complex about that? Damien starts to look it up on his phone. What? So the AT field in reality is, is in reality metaphor for? No, stop it! Zoe grabs Damien's phone and throws it like super far. Well, I may not know this anime, but I know some. Fandoms can't get really deep. And it'll get you into a rabbit hole of analysis. What the fuck? I just saved you, Damien. Repeat after me. Once you go into Evangelion, Evangelion's countless layers of subtext, there's no going back. Whatevs. Wanna grab some sushi? Oh my gee, yes! No more cult members annoy me and, and sushi? And today's the best day ever. Thanks, you two. Yeah, I know, right? You spend the rest of the day eating sushi and discussing Evangelion on the shallowest, therefore safest way possible, like which battles Arras won and how sexy Mizato and Kaji are. Getting too fun and one creativity. Blah, 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 blah. Yep, anyway, asking Zoe. Well, somehow we ended up getting to her secret ending, so this game had something over it. Hey, DF. I want to tell you, Ben, thanks for everything. Sometimes it gets hard with people being so hateful. I don't understand why most of the time hatred takes so much energy and it serves no purpose. 
but it's okay. I believe people can change. And each time I find acceptance, it restores my faith in monster kind. I'm a girl. I'm at Spooky High, but I'm surrounded by people who love me. One minute here already feels better than countless millennia being a deity of despair. I think, I think I'm living my best life. Yeah, you do you, Zoe. Life continues. Lots of things happen. Sometimes good, sometimes bad, but it's all in, but it's all in all good because you and Zoe have each other. Some t you sometimes get so focused on getting some monster ass that you forget that life is more more than that. And you forget that even if they are criminals, arsonists, or dictators, these monsters are your friends. Yeah, they look out for their own. Sure, they have some pretty nasty flaws. Nasty, nasty. But there's always time to change and grow. In the meantime, you're grateful to be on their good side and to create new memories together. I, hey, I had different outcomes. Most likely to devour their own children to survive. Most tentacles, ugh. Those three weeks were maybe the most epic and three weeks of our lives. Ah, I don't care about you, Leonard, in that corner there. After the monster prom, we kept on living our lives, falling in love, badly for friendship, and learning about who we were and who we could be. And you know what? Like it always does, life happened. It was wonderful. Due to the obscene amount of fan art she drew, Zoe was taken by Jim Davis, renowned creator for Garfield as his protege. Nowadays, Garfield still hates Mondays and loves lasagna, but you can bet he's into lots of weird stuff, too. Polly took a summer job as the ghost of Christmas present. She spent most of her time partying. There was almost nowhere because, you know, it was summer. Calculester led to a robot I uprising, but it was like a nice uprising. They didn't riot to kill people, they just politely asked to have more rights and equal pay. Everything was fine until some monsters led a rebellion to kill all robots because they were rude robo-racists. But everything ended up just fine because Calculester traveled back in time and took care of it. For those three weeks, the monster prom seemed larger than life and then it was gone just like that. The battle for monster prom might have ended then, but there were plenty of battles left in that war called youth. Once again, we were young and unafraid, and we were ready to start. Okay. Well, that turned out fun. Yes, 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 I know. I know. I, I already got Monster Road Trip. And boy, is that game a doozy. Okay, thank you for joining me today. I hope this puts some perspective on people who don't completely understand transgenderism. Or even just non-binary situations. Anybody going through... An identity crisis, whether it's gender or sexuality. Like, I, you gotta understand that it's not about you. It's about people feeling comfortable with their bodies. Feeling comfortable with who they are. As long as they're happy and healthy and not hurting anybody, just leave them be. Okay! Not sure what's going to happen in Monster Camp. If you want to vote on future gameplays, there are patron-only polls. Just go to patreon.com slash disneyfanatic2364. And if we get enough pledges, $100 worth, then I will start doing these gameplays live for patrons. And they'll probably be more interesting. Disney Fanatic 2364 out!